What if I told you, you don't need to live at the track or train like a pro to unlock the same endurance secrets Olympic athletes use? In the next few minutes, you'll learn how to turbocharge your oxygen uptake, hack your fuel systems, and build an engine so efficient that you'll outlast your competition, and even your own expectations. Ready to stop wondering why they keep going and start knowing how you can keep going on too? Let's dive in. Okay, let's kick off with a simple idea. Your body is an engine, but it's not a one size fits all engine, it's three engines in one. And the first is hybrid mode. It's your fat burning system. Slow, steady, ultra efficient. So in 1967, Halazi showed that just four weeks of low intensity cycling doubled mitochondrial density in muscle fibers, literally adding more power plants to your cells. System two, sports car mode, your carbohydrate burner. Moderate intensity, think tempo runs or brisk uphill efforts. Quick acceleration, higher speed, but it guzzles fuel and produces more byproducts like hydrogen ions, which can fatigue muscles. And system three, nitrous oxide mode, basically anaerobic sprinting. All out effort, no oxygen, rapid lactic acid buildup. It's usable for short bursts, think 10 to 30 seconds, but you can't sustain it longer than that. But if you only ever train in sports car nitrous modes, you burn through glycogen, accumulate fatigue causing byproducts, and crash hard. Master hybrid mode, so called zone two. You tap into hours of steady fuel, build a durable base, and create a safety net for those harder efforts. Before we talk workouts, let's define VO2 max, your maximal oxygen uptake, literally how much air your engine can suck in and use. So I want you to picture a supercharger on a race car, more air in, more fuel burned cleanly, more power. A 2018 JAMA trial found a 12% VO2 max increase in older adults after only 12 weeks of interval training. Higher VO2 max raises your top sustainable speed, but without an efficient base, that speed only lasts seconds. So think of VO2 max as your top end horsepower, but zone two is your fuel tank. You need both, but in balance. So zone two is your car's most efficient highway gear. Light throttle, smooth ride, minimal fuel use. You can go forever. Zone two is approximately 60 to 70% of your heart rate max. You can hold full sentences. You burn predominantly fat. Up to 80% of your fuel comes from lipids. And why does zone two matter? A 2019 Journal of Applied Physiology Meta-Analysis confirmed up to 25% better fat oxidation and solid endurance gains from regular zone two work. More mitochondria equals more fuel burning sites, which equals a bigger fuel tank. Reduced inflammation and improved capillary density, meaning better nutrient and oxygen delivery to muscles. So how do you nail zone two? First, strap on a heart rate monitor or use any reliable wearable. You wanna pick your modality, run, bike, swim, row, even brisk hiking. Additionally, you wanna stay at 60 to 70% heart rate max for 45 to 90 minutes. And lastly, build up three to six hours per week in this zone. Pro tip, use the talk test. If you can't speak in full sentences without gasping, you've drifted into zone three. So slow down, imagine you're on a date with this workout. Linger, savor, don't rush. And a bonus hack, once every two weeks, include a long, slow distance session of up to two hours at the low end of zone two. This amplifies mitochondrial biogenesis. Basically think of it as upgrading your engine block. When you pick up the pace, hill surges, closing race gaps, finishing sprints, you bump into zone two thresholds. The first is the aerobic threshold. This is the top end of the fat burning mode, around 70 to 80% of heart rate max. You wanna make sure you stay under it and you cruise affordably on fat fuel. Next is the anaerobic threshold when lactate production outpaces clearance, roughly 89% of heart rate max, cross it and you redline, muscle burn, breathing heaves, and you can only sustain two to five minutes before crashing. I want you to imagine a treadmill that steadily speeds up. So below the aerobic threshold, you run smoothly without gripping the rails. Between the aerobic and the anaerobic threshold, you burn carbs and cruise. You can hold this for 10 to 20 minutes. And above that anaerobic threshold, you're hanging on for dear life, gasping for air five three-minute intervals at 95 to 100% of heart rate max with three minutes of easy recovery. A 2016 trial in the European Journal of Applied Physiology cited 9% VO2 max gain after six weeks of this protocol. And you wanna limit these to one to two sessions per week to avoid overtraining and injury. And a stretch goal, occasionally throw in a mixed interval session, alternating one minute of anaerobic training with one minute of VO2 max for 20 minutes total. Great for pushing both thresholds simultaneously. All right, let's turn theory into action. 
Here's a one week template you can repeat and tweak. Swap in your favorite activities, but keep the energy system targets. Monday, zone two base. 60 minutes at conversational pace, which is basically 60 to 70% of heart rate max. Follow with five minutes of dynamic stretching. Tuesday, strength and mobility. 40 minutes functional strength, squats, lunges, deadlifts, pushups, and planks. Followed by 20 minutes of mobility, hip openers, thoracic rotations, and calf stretches. Wednesday, threshold power. So warm up, 15 minutes easy. Then your main set, three by 12 minutes at 80 to 90% of Hari max with five minutes easy between efforts. And lastly, cool down, about 10 minutes of easy. Thursday, zone two recovery. 45 minutes at 65 to 70% of heart rate max, easy spin or jog. Finish with light foam rolling or massage. Friday, VO2 max intervals. So warm up 15 minutes. You wanna follow this in the main set of five three minute intervals at 95 to 100% of heart rate max with three minutes of recovery. A cool down of 10 minutes. Saturday, long zone two. 90 to 120 minutes at 60 to 70% of heart rate max. Steady but comfortable. Practice fueling on the go. Water, electrolytes, small carb snacks every 30 minutes. And Sunday, rest or active recovery. Optional 30 minutes of walking, yoga, or gentle swim. Or full rest, no structured workout. So see how four to six hours of a week live in zone two. That's your engine building foundation. Threshold and VO2 max sessions are sprinkled in to push your limits. Strength and recovery tie it all together. So let's put it all together. What are the tricks of the trade? The first is periodization. Block one, four to six weeks of base work, zone two focus. Block two, two to three weeks of threshold emphasis. Block three, one week VO2 max microcycle. And you wanna repeat, keep adaptations fresh to avoid plateaus. Next up, use data. Heart rate monitors and power meters don't lie. Track weekly volume, intensity, and your subjective energy levels. Point three, listen to your body. Measure morning resting heart rate. If it's up five to seven beats per minute, dial back. That's your body saying, I need a break. Tip four, fuel smart. Zone two days. So balanced meals, healthy fats, things like avocados and nuts, complex carbs like sweet potatoes and oats, and lean protein. And on your hard days, bump up carbs pre and post workout to refill glycogen and speed recovery. Next up, you want to mind the mind. Mental endurance is half the battle. Use visualization. Break workouts into mini goals, the next hill or the next 10 minutes and practice positive self-talk. Point six, environmental stressors, heat training. So a 2020 sports medicine review found that 10 days of heat acclimation boosted time to exhaustion by 8%. Additionally, altitude, brief exposures, seven to 10 days can stimulate red blood cell production and improve oxygen delivery. Next up, cross-training and injury prevention. So a 2017 PLOS One meta-analysis showed cyclists cross-training with running maintained 95% of their running fitness during injury periods. You want to include unilateral drills, so single leg deadlifts, step ups, to shore up imbalances and protect joints. And lastly, embrace the boring. Most gains come from consistent, easy efforts. Trust the process, even if it feels slow. Over time, you'll see monumental improvements. Real world proof. A 2019 Frontiers in Physiology paper reported recreational runners who replaced two weekly hard workouts with zone two sessions for eight weeks improved their 10 kilometer times by approximately 4% and felt far less fatigued on long runs. So let's talk hydration, recovery, and sleep. So first hydration, even a 2% dehydration can drop performance by 5%. You wanna make sure you sip water and electrolytes throughout workouts and all day. Regarding sleep, you wanna aim for at least eight hours nightly. In fact, a 2018 medicine and science in sports and exercise study found that athletes who improve sleep quality saw a 3% time trial boost. And as far as recovery, foam rollers and massage guns to reduce muscle soreness. Additionally, contrast baths, so hot, cold, to stimulate circulation and accelerate repair. So bottom line, you don't need to train like an Olympian to unlock Olympian level endurance. You just need to understand your engines and fuel them properly. Master the base, zone two is non-negotiable. It's your aerobic foundation. You also need to respect your thresholds. Use threshold work to expand limits. VO2 max sparingly to boost the top end. And lastly, recover religiously. Sleep, hydration, nutrition, and recovery tools are integral. Remember, speed is born from endurance. Endurance is built on smart, consistent effort. And if this helped, smash the like button, subscribe for more performance science deep dives, and drop your biggest training questions below. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next one. Thank you.